All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. I thank you all for coming. I'm uh, Denver Chief of Police Ron Thomas uh, here with uh, Major Crimes Division Commander Matt Clark uh, to provide an overview of the officer involved shooting incident that occurred Saturday, August 5th in the 2300 block of West Cedar. Uh, but before I uh, turn it over to uh, Commander Clark, um, I understand that you all have uh, had an opportunity to watch the video. Hopefully we'll be able to provide some additional context, but I also want to acknowledge the fact that this is a tremendous tragedy and certainly a life was lost. Uh, family will forever be impacted and so will an entire community. And so I'd, I'd ask for some respect there. So thank you, Matt. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here and giving us an opportunity to provide an overview of the incident as we know it uh, that occurred on Saturday, August 5th, 2023, just after 8 p.m in the 2300 block of West Cedar. I'm Matt Clark, the commander of the Major Crimes Division for the Denver Police Department. This uh, briefing today is intended to be a follow-up uh, based upon the information we've gathered after interviewing numerous witnesses, uh, speaking with the involved officers, reviewing available body camera footage, and analyzing evidence that was collected at the scene. There may be information that I do not know uh, or cannot disclose at this point, which may limit our ability to answer some questions but to the degree we're able, we'll take questions uh, after we go through. Uh, on Saturday, August 5th, 2023, at 7.56 p.m., the Denver Communications Center received a 911 call from an individual reporting a domestic violence incident occurring in the 2300 block of West Cedar Avenue. While the caller did not know exactly what occurred, it was reported that a male had possibly pushed his wife, who was in a wheelchair, out of the chair and onto the ground. The caller had not seen any weapons and did not know if the female was injured. The caller provided a detailed description of the male half, who she identified as Brandon, and reported that Brandon was possibly under the influence of alcohol. Uh, at one point during the call, the witness reported the male was going after his teenage son, and yelling could be heard in the background of the call. This call for service was dispatched to patrol officers within a minute of being received. Two uniformed Denver police officers driving separate marked police vehicles were nearby and arrived at the location at 8 p.m. When the officers arrived, a female was observed propping herself up in a gutter on the north side of the street. An empty wheelchair was nearby, uh, and it was found with two wheels on the gutter and two on the sidewalk. An officer had a brief interaction with the woman on the ground, inquiring if she needed medical assistance. Without providing the officer details regarding the nature or severity of her injuries, the woman related she needed an ambulance. Uh, before an ambulance could be summoned or further investigation conducted regarding the possible domestic violence incident, the attention of both officers became focused uh, on the male half of the incident, who was observed reaching into the driver's area of a vehicle that was parked on the north side of Cedar Avenue. When the subject stepped away from the vehicle, he began challenging a uniformed officer who was directly in front of him by taking an aggressive stance and yelling, let's go. The female officer who was behind the subject observed him holding an object in his right hand that she believed to be a knife. The officer described uh, observing the subject moving the object back and forth from his back area to his front, holding it in a threatening manner. The subject began uh, moving in the direction of the male officer who was in front of him. This officer presented his taser and began moving backwards away from the subject while attempting to de-escalate the male by calling, him, by calling his name and speaking calmly with him. The subject then turned his attention to the female uniformed officer who had repositioned herself behind a vehicle on the south curb line. As the subject began moving towards the female on the sidewalk, the male officer discharged his taser device. Every patrol officer in Denver is issued a taser device. These less lethal conducted energy devices are used to incapacitate individuals, uh, allowing officers to safely approach and take control of a person. While these devices have been effective in countless situations in Denver, there are limitations, specifically that the device functions by firing two probes at a target, and both probes must make contact with the individual to be effective. The maximum range of the device is 21 feet. In this case, it appears that only one of the two probes struck the moving subject, and as a result, the taser did not have an effect on the individual. The male disregarded multiple commands to stop, he ran around a vehicle to the south side of the street and aggressively approached the female officer on the sidewalk, quickly closing the distance with her as she backed away. When he was within several feet of the officer, the officer explained that she feared she would be stabbed and potentially overtaken by the subject. She discharged two rounds from her duty firearm. The subject fell to the ground and dropped the object from his right hand. The officers immediately called for an ambulance and began rendering aid. 
both officers, including one had, who had prior training as a paramedic, began life-saving efforts, including the application of a chest seal, multiple tourniquets, and the administration of chest compressions until Denver Fire and Denver Health paramedics arrived at the scene. The subject was transported to the hospital, and despite resuscitative efforts, he was pronounced deceased. Male subject has been identified as 36-year-old Brandon Cole. His birth date is December 7, 1986. Investigators are still working to understand the nature of the interaction between Mr. Cole and the female prior to the arrival of officers, including how she came to be out of the wheelchair. Through the investigation, it was determined that the object Mr. Cole had in his hand during the interaction with the officers was a black marker. Multiple individuals were interviewed during the initial investigation. Several independent witnesses believe Mr. Cole was armed with a weapon as he approached the officer who discharged her weapon. Only one Denver police officer fired a weapon during this incident and a total of two rounds were fired. The officer who discharged her weapon is a patrol officer assigned to District 4 in Southwest Denver. She's been with the department since 2019 and has not been involved in a previous police shooting incident. The body-worn camera devices for both officers were activated and captured both audio and video of their interaction with Mr. Cole. The involved officer will complete the department's reintegration program before returning to a patrol assignment. The investigation of this critical incident, as any other critical incident, is investigated uh, in cooperation with the Colorado uh, Bureau of Investigations, the Colorado State Patrol, the department's homicide unit, and the district attorney's office. It's overseen by the Office of the Independent Monitor, which is a civilian oversight entity. I'll conclude by just asking anyone who may have additional information about this incident who we haven't spoken with to please contact the police department or Crime Stoppers with any additional information. I can now address any questions you may have. I don't believe they did. Uh, it, it, it transpired very quickly. It's in fact, it's almost just over 40 seconds between when the officers arrived um, and the shots were ultimately fired. So it happens very quickly. Um, they are quickly addressing and trying to um, calm Brandon and get his compliance, and that wasn't uh, effective. Do you think the first officer said, listen to me, to Brandon, do you think that counts as de-escalation? Part of the escalation is specifically calling him by name. Um, speaking calmly with him, trying to, to get his compliance, and that, that just wasn't effective to him. And, and then uh, we see uh, Mr. Cole moving towards the officer. In the second body camera, we see a young child, and it appears to be another adult behind Brandon. Do you think the female officer had to leave the cruiser in that situation instead of firing the weapon? Do you want to address yeah, I, I can address that question. I can certainly appreciate the, the, the thought that that might have been the appropriate tactic. However, so um, uh, in our training, when we have less lethal deployed, regardless of how many officers are on scene that have less lethal options deployed, we, we have to have one officer that has uh, a lethal weapon deployed in case those uh, less lethal options are not effective. And certainly in this situation, there are only two officers on scene at the time of force, and so it would have been appropriate for her to have her uh, duty weapon out while the other officer was uh, deploying the, the less lethal option of the taser. And as you can see, there just wasn't an opportunity to transition to, to a taser. Well, I think, again, I think you can see in the video that uh, when she finally deploys her duty weapon, the person is so close to her that her view of that young child and that other person are not even clear to her. And so, you know, certainly um, that was a consideration, um, but I think it was just not much time to act before she was overrun by that, that individual. Yes, in fact, we have uh, met with the family and some representatives of the family. We've showed them the video. We've uh, connected them with victim services, so yes. What does the woman say happened? How did she say she got out of the wheelchair? Interesting. 
So she has elected not to be, uh, to provide a statement to investigators at this point. So she did not provide us a specific um, explanation as to why she was out of the wheelchair. So we don't have specific information about how she got out of the wheelchair. I think uh, bef just to provide additional context, either for those who elect not to watch the video, it is graphic, um, or in this setting who are watching, uh, to go over some slides to put some context into uh, some of the spatial distance between uh, the officers and the individual and some of, of what they may have seen. <clears throat> this first is from an officer, uh, the officer's body camera, he's positioned to the west of Mr. Cole there in the 2300 block of West Cedar. Uh, this is essentially the distance they were when they first, uh, when he had just come out of the driver's area of the door, he had closed the door. The yellow uh, object in the officer's hand is a taser. Our tasers are all, they're yellow. Um, and this is where they specifically start talking. The other officer, uh, the female officer had arrived from Yuma and so she's east of, of Brandon there. So this is the distance initially. Um, Brandon begins approaching uh, the officer, as he's uh, backing away, he has a taser. And then he is, the officer's backed up to this point behind his vehicle. That's uh, how close Brandon had come before uh, Mr. Cole turns his attention to the south to the officer who uh, had repositioned herself on the sidewalk and behind a vehicle. Um, of specific note, and as described by the officers, the way he's holding his hand and that there's an object that they believe to be a knife in his hand at that point. This is the view from the female officer who positioned herself on the sidewalk and put a vehicle between her and the subject to create a barrier. Uh, Mr. Cole is coming around that vehicle. She has given up ground and continues to back up. She's backing up to the west, backs up farther. And this is her location uh, and Mr. Cole's location as the, just prior to the shot being fired. Uh, and, and in response, as you can see at this point, uh, the young child who was behind Mr. Cole is not visible to the officer, or is not visible in this frame, excuse me. Any other questions? Is there any policy with MPD for that firing of a gun with pedestrians or people behind that subject? So we always train our officers to be uh, conscious and aware of their target and beyond, and certainly we, uh, we do... Uh, both live sh shooting and uh, virtual reality scenario shooting where we're in crowds, where we're amongst people, where there are targets that, uh, that we're not supposed to hit and, and there's a failure when we, when we hit those targets. Yes, ma'am. No, so again, when we deploy uh, uh, less lethal uh, weapons, uh, we need to have at least one person that has a, a lethal weapon, a, a handgun, um, just in case those, those less lethal options do not work and in case it escalates to a deadly force encounter. And then you can continue to try to do the less lethal options. Absolutely, absolutely, as, yeah, correct. You had a question, ma'am? Or did it get answered? Okay. Correct, correct. So, um, you know, we worked with the uh, uh, Colorado Bureau of Investigation and State Patrol uh, to conduct the initial scene investigation. That investigation continues, and uh, uh, that investigation is being done under the watchful eye of the Office of the Independent Monitor. And that complete investigation will be turned over to uh, the district attorney for review. We're going to have to continue to evaluate that, certainly, and so, you know, we we're, we're going to wait until after the uh, review by uh, DA McCann is complete before we begin our administrative review. You mentioned that 911 caller suggested that um, Cole might be under the influence of alcohol. Were you, have you yet confirmed or non-confirmed that? We have not. Unfortunately, toxicology reports are uh, quite a distance out. Uh, uh, we, we will not at this time, but obviously those names will be included in the report that's released by D.A. McCann. The caller um, said that uh, Brandon was pulled shortly after this crime took, took effect. 
Well, unfortunately, we don't know exactly what that means. And we did interview uh, the caller. We did uh, interview a number of other witnesses on the scene. And so uh, we're not exactly sure. We were not able to determine whether or not an actual domestic violence incident had occurred involving the wife or the son. Uh, just a couple of years old. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you.